Look at something else that Paul wrote in uh, Romans chapter 6. I'll, I'll just let you turn to it. It's quicker, so much quicker if you turn to it here. Romans 6, verse 6. Look at what he said uh, here. Knowing this, and when he says knowing this, he always I always want to stop and point this out to you. When Paul says knowing this, he means he wants us to know this. This is something that he wants us to incorporate into our thinking. In other words, know this. We should know this. Listen, what should we know, Paul? That our old man is crucified with Him. See, he says, know this, our old man is crucified with Him. Now, who's your old man? Well, that's who you were before Jesus. That's who you were before you believed in Jesus. He says, our old man is crucified with Him. Again, notice he doesn't say, we, it should be, uh, it, it ought to be that way, uh, you need to get serious and, and try to do it. He says, it is. Jesus did it. Did you know that uh, the beautiful thing about this is Jesus did for us what really, if we could just be honest, the reality is we cannot do for ourselves. Like that man I read you about where he tried to do it literally. He couldn't do it literally, but even spiritually, we can't do it. We can't crucify ourselves. And if we could, we wouldn't need Jesus. But we do need Jesus. And, and the beautiful thing is He did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. He embraced us. Uh, Paul says let, let, or earlier in this book of Romans back in chapter 5 that when we, even when we were weak, when we were too weak to do anything for ourselves, that's when Jesus died for us. He embraced us and did for us something that we could not do for ourselves. And so Paul here says, incorporate this into your thinking. Know this, our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed. The word destroyed there is a Greek word, katargeo, that means deprived of power. The body of sin is deprived of power if you'll know this, if you'll incorporate this in your thinking. I'm crucified with him. Now, that we henceforth should not serve sin. Now let's go back to, uh, Anton, if you would, Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, um, verse 23. Now let's take what we've just read and apply it to what he's saying here and see if that fits. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. He said to them all, if any man will come after me, in other words, if you're going to follow me, here's something that's true. Let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Now from the other side of the cross, we heard from the Apostle Paul, we have been crucified with Him. But that is something we can take up. We can take up that reality and we can take it up every day. And what a blessing it would be if we did that. Christ lives in me. How would we live our lives if it's Christ making the decisions? Well, Paul says, think of it that way because it really is true. Uh, but notice he also says, let him deny himself. Now, again, we read something like that and we imagine all kinds of things. Well, I'm, uh, I'm not going to eat a chocolate bar for 40 days, so I'm going to deny myself. Well, you know, you know, people say things like that. And really, I don't want to impugn anything anybody might do, but you know, those little, those little things are kind of trivial and, and not all that important. You know, Well, I'm not going to go to the Dairy Queen and buy a milkshake. I really want to, but I'm going to deny myself. Well, okay, but, but does that really make any difference? You know? and, I don't, and I'm sorry if, I, if I've said something that you, <laughs> that you might be thinking. But, uh, but you know, that, those things don't matter. Those things don't make any difference if you eat a chocolate bar. You just decide for yourself if you want to go to the Dairy Queen. Well, it's not the Dairy Queen anymore. What is it now? It's something else. They changed it. Ranger Grill, thank you. I, I noticed they, uh, they took down the Dairy Queen. So, well, anyway, you know what I mean. Um, but when he says deny himself, uh, well, what does that mean? Well, here's, here's something I would just want you to consider that's far more important. Uh, I was reading a book by a man named J.B. Phillips, and he is a translator, a Bible translator. He's a Greek scholar, and he translated the New Testament into modern English. It's called the Phillips Translation. And it's a good translation. I like it pretty well. It's one of my many various translations that I study. And J.B. Phillips wrote a little book after he translated the New Testament. And the book that he wrote was about all the things that he learned in translating the New Testament, all the things, the little insights that he gained in studying the Greek language in order to make this translation. And it's very insightful, and he had lots of very positive and interesting things. And one of the things that I really liked was he said when he was studying the word believe in the New Testament, because over and over again we're told to believe Jesus. Or often it says this, to believe on Him. To believe on Him. He said the word believe, as it's translated into English, has a far broader definition in the Greek language. Uh, the word that gets translated believe, it means far more than just to mentally agree that something is true. Like people say, well, I don't believe in Santa Claus, you know, or I believe it's going to rain tomorrow, you know, just like a mental agreement. He said in the Greek language, what it really means is it has the connotation of placing your confidence in or placing your trust in, 
placing your reliance upon. And he said, if you really want to understand what the word believe is, it, it means this. When the New Testament says that a man should believe on Jesus, he said it means for a person to take his whole confidence and transfer it from himself to Jesus. His whole reliance and confidence and trust and take it, transfer it from himself and put it on Jesus. In other words, I'm not trusting myself anymore. I'm not relying on myself anymore. I don't have any confidence in me. I put all my confidence in Him as it relates to God. In other words, I'm not thinking, well, I'm going to get up before God one day and defend myself and say, well, I tried to do my best and I tried to be a good person and, and I tried and I, 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 I. You don't, it's not about you anymore. Now it's all about Jesus. And you see, the, the thing that, that we've got as Christians, we can say, to, you know, I, I, sometimes people ask me, and, and I've had this question sometimes, how do I know if I'm really believing in Jesus? How do I know if I really... I, I, people worry about that, you know. How do I know if I really do trust Him? And I said, well, just imagine this little scenario. Just imagine in your mind, just suppose you've died and you've gone up before the gates of heaven and uh, a big angel meets you at the gates and why should I let you in here? Now, if you're going to answer, well, I've tried to do good and I've tried to do this and I've tried to do that and, and I've done this and I've done that, that's the wrong answer. But if you say... See, so you're, you're trusting in you. If that's your answer, you're trusting not in Jesus, but in you. But if you imagine that little scenario, you've died, you've gone up before the gates of heaven, and a big angel says, uh, why should I let you in here? And you say, I've got nothing to trust in except Jesus. I put all my faith and my trust in Him. That's, that tells you that I'm trusting in Jesus. If you could imagine that little scenario and imagine that that's what you'd say, I've got nothing except Jesus. I've got nothing to commend me to God except Jesus. I've got nothing to rely upon except Jesus. What that means is I've denied myself. <laughs> See, that's a different way of looking at it. I'm not trusting in myself anymore. I'm not about me anymore. Now I put all my faith, my trust, my confidence in Him. Now that, if I, th I think if you think of it that way, uh, that fits with, with the idea of the cross. Uh, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Uh, it's not about me anymore. I'm not trusting in me. And it does mean, you know, we don't do selfish things. You know, that, that thought is there. Uh, take up his cross daily and follow me. Verse 24, For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. This is such a, a paradoxical thing to say. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. This seems like it doesn't make sense in a way. But think about it this way. If I want to save my own life, my independent life, there's a better life that I'm missing out on. But if I'm willing to lose mine, he says, I've got a higher one or a better one for you, you see. I remember one time, I, I wasn't always doing you know, this, had, didn't always have a church. You know, earlier in my Christian life, I just went to, went to church, you know. Uh, and I always, because I'm a musician, I always end up in the worship team. And I remember at a particular church far back in my past, I remember I was in the music group and, and the music group all set up on the stage, on the little platform. and, and people all out here like you are right now and and so we sit there we play our songs and the rest of the time I'm just sitting there looking at everybody and so I've got a like you know I'm seeing the audience the congregation and in this particular church the custom was uh, there was a bio, a scripture reading a bible reading and it was in the, the little program the little paper you know the whatever that's called the, the bulletin I guess whatever you know everybody got one of those when they came in and there's this order of events and hymn number one and and this thing and that thing, all these different events, and stand up, sit down, all these different things. And I'm not meaning to demean that, but do lots of things, lots of little events. And one of the little events on the program was the scripture reading, as though we don't get plenty of it in the sermon, but uh, the scripture reading. So, and somebody in the congregation, it was their job to read it. So here was this verse right here. I remember this one particular day, because I was, well, anyway. Uh, it, Whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. And I remember looking out at people's faces and they looked so sad when that was being read. Because I think what we hear when we read that, I think what we, all we hear is lose. I lose. <laughs> well, see, he didn't just say you lose. He also said you, you gain. He said, if you'll, he said he's offering an exchange, in other words. He's offering, if you'll lose yours, I've got a better one for you. If you can read through the spiritual... He, he speaks it in the form of a kind of a parable, a kind of a paradox. But this is really what he's saying here. Uh, whoever will save his own personal private life of trusting in himself and relying upon himself, if you'll lose your own life, I've got a higher one for you. I've got a better one for you. 
if you're willing to lose this lower life, I've got a much higher life that you can exchange it for.